I'll tell you a brief story about trying to go beyond the crop, which is obviously currently the workhorse of deep learning. Uh, but there are various alternatives that could have been probably explored more. And they might have some properties that, be, uh, that backpropagation doesn't have. So in some senses, they may be more advantageous and vice versa, they have drawbacks. But at least it would be interesting to explore those alternatives. And that's, uh, that was a project with my colleagues from IBM Research and um, NYU and MIT. Currently, I moved to uh, Mila and University of Montreal, but I continue the collaboration with them. And uh, okay, do, you, do you see my top of my screen well? Okay, so my screen is kind of covered by just a second. Sure, we, we see uh, rethinking deep learning at the top. Yeah, perfect, okay. Okay, so basically um, if you think about that, the state of art in neural networks is um, dependent on particular decisions about modeling neurons and modeling uh, information propagation and the credit assignment that were done at particular times in the history of machine learning. And uh, they really work well and so on. But on the other hand, you could have possibly consider alternatives and explore kind of other branches of this decision tree, uh, if you say so. So there is work, especially recently, trying to uh, explore how to make neurons more biologically plausible in the artificial neural network and uh, what would it imply for learning. Uh, there are various um, recent works, for example, on segregated dendrites and so on and so forth. But there are also alternative approaches that were explored to the uh, credit assignment pro uh, problem. And we kind of uh, piggybacked on those approaches when working on this project. And mainly they are along the lines of so-called target propagation, uh, which was actually originally proposed by Jan Likan even uh, in his uh, PhD thesis. And then there was a follow-up work, but it was a bit challenging to make this type of approaches um, work empirically as well as bad propagation, although they would have some other good properties. And we try to kind of target that problem. Um, okay, just a second. Okay, yeah, so just like a curious uh, uh, interview with Jeff Hinton a few years ago when uh, he was mentioning that, well, indeed, maybe we need to throw away back propagation and uh, start all over again and explore other methods. Um, so, well, I think at least we should explore alternatives and the reasons, uh, as mentioned in the various recent papers, there are a few issues with backpropagation. So biological implausibility is one part, if you're coming from neuroscience background and you want to see how credit assignment is done and whether backpropagation is kind of the most realistic way, and it has its issues. So first of all, the activations, quote unquote, a neural network, they are deterministic and that's not what's going on in the brain. So there is no clear propagation of neural activity, there is no noise in the variables, at least not in standard models. Uh, there are other issues about um, lack of parallelization across layers and the weight transport problem and many other issues like violation of Dale's law, so on and so forth. So there is lots of work um, in trying to figure out more biologically plausible um, approaches to model the credit assignment. But from computational perspective, and that was more of our interest here, uh, there are also well-known issues that you would like to avoid. And uh, one of the uh, big issues is potentially vanishing or exploding gradients. And the main reason for that, especially in deep, very deep networks or in recurrent neural networks, is a long chain of gradients that you're computing. So uh, that's kind of one problem. The other related problem is that due to this chain computation, you cannot just easily parallelize uh, weight updates across different layers. And uh, kind of you lack parallelism that uh, natural brains kind of exhibit um, all the time. And also, of course, because of this chain of gradients, uh, it's hard to handle non-differentiable nonlinearities and um, binary spikes, for example. 
So the core issue seems to be this chain of derivatives, the uh, main property of backpropagation approach. And there are multiple approaches, as I mentioned before, by pioneers of deep learning. Uh, they, they were exploring this so-called target pro propagation methods or different target propagation and uh, uh, augmentation of that in uh, various papers. But so far, uh, it was unclear whether they can really be competitive with backpropagation in terms of um, generalization uh, accuracy. So there is lots of related work also in kind of uh, optimization community and attempts to overcome these problems with um, uh, vanishing gradients, with uh, parallelization and so on. And they kind of based on this idea of auxiliary variables that we're also gonna be uh, using in our work. But the problem is that all of them are offline methods. And if you imagine uh, extremely large data sets or data streams, those methods will not apply. So what we're proposing here is to build upon these ideas of auxiliary variable optimization methods to introduce extra variables to optimize over. Besides weights, you will be actually optimizing activations themselves because they will become variables, but you also will do it online. So that's kind of the main um, contribution on top of all these different attempts to introduce auxiliary variable methods. And also we do observe competitive behavior with backpropagation in various settings and data sets. So here is the idea. Uh, essentially, I will break the gradient chains with those auxiliary activation variables. So if you think about the standard neural net, um, you transform the previous layer inputs access here uh, using linear um, transformation first, and then you apply nonlinearity and you obtain your activations. So either at activation level or that linear transformed variables that we call C or linear codes, uh, you can start treating those as variables themselves, not just as deterministic functions. And then that will allow you to split your computation of your optimization problem into independent layer-wise optimization subproblems. And that's essentially uh, what is going on if you write down the standard objective function for neural net learning, uh, whether it's cross entropy or if it's some regression problem, it's uh, quadratic loss. Uh, but you're trying to minimize this loss uh, given your input X and set of weights and this compound function F, which encodes basically the neural net structure and given the true label Y. So you see that compound function here, uh, applying the weights at different levels and then applying nonlinearities. But you can also write the same optimization problem in constrained form. And again, it's nothing new. I mean, uh, people do it all the time in optimization, but let's see where it leads us here. So if you denote as separate variables, those linear encodings or transformations from previous layer activations and say that now they become variables you also want to optimize over. Essentially, um, you now minimize not just over weights, you minimize over W's weights and C's, those uh, linear pre-activations. You can also rewrite it then from constraint form into the usual Lagrangian form. And instead of having this full Lagrangian with all the coefficients there, a simplified version is just kind of a regularized loss as it's written here. So this is equivalent to the kind of this constraint form, but what it means, the last kind of reformulation and the last line, we will be trying to optimize not just weights, but also those kind of linear pre-activations while at the same time, we will be requiring those Cs that we introduced as new variables to be close to what they were supposed to be in the regular neural net. But we allow some wiggle room now. So we're minimizing this quadratic uh, loss, basically the, the norm of the difference between what those variables are and what they should have been 
if the network was completely deterministic. So, but by allowing this wiggle room and by treating them as separate set of variables, we can now decompose this optimization problem into layer-wise optimizations. And that's essentially what is going on. Um, so when you see a new batch of data or a new sample, just like in regular neural net training, say you do it online, um, like if you use stochastic gradient descent, but here you would use uh, this online alternating minimization. Well, you compute your output given the inputs. And instead of doing back propagation on your weights, you first update those codes or activations. So you do have information propagation, but it works on activations now, kind of more similar to what's happening in the brain. And then you update weights, but this is completely parallelizable because setting those activation variables or codes to certain values will completely decouple and break the chain of um, weight optimization. So you don't have to compute the chain of gradients over the weights anymore. And that's kind of the main message here. And there are different ways to update those weights. I'm not gonna go into details there in the paper. Uh, you can do actually also gradient on them, or you can do uh, some trick that was applied to online dictionary learning and uh, was quite effective basically keeping memory matrices uh, encoding like some second order information. But anyway, so each sub problem, that's the main port, uh, point now, each sub problem, each layer will optimize its weights independently of other layers. And there is no chain of gradients here. Um, kind of to go into somewhat details, but uh, yeah, probably shouldn't do it too much. Here is this overview, as I mentioned, you go over specific samples for each sample. You do encode this input given the current weights, then you sweep through and update the activations to what they should have been, after which the update weights, the problem is separate for each layer. And in terms of how you update activations, um, essentially first you encode your input, you compute the output, and then updating those activations is also actually a sequence of particular optimization problems here that you can solve in different ways. Yeah, as I mentioned before, you can also do stochastic gradient, but just locally on each layer. Anyway, so probably we don't want to get into too much detail. I uh, just wanted to note that besides the uh, algorithm and empirical evaluation here, uh, in our collaboration with uh, Anna Karamanska from NYU, uh, we're able to also show some theoretical guarantees for this type of alternating minimization approaches, uh, basically saying that they will converge and how fast they will converge, assuming that you start in some reasonable point uh, from which you can achieve local minimum. I will not bore you with details, but it's nice to have at least some uh, theoretical guarantees for this algorithm's convergence as well. Okay, so the interesting part now in terms of results, uh, we tried it on several standard benchmarks, of course, like MNIST, CIFAR-10. And the interesting thing, okay, so what we compared it with? So we compared it with standard SGD, with ADAM, as kind of more um, effective version of SGD. And we also compared it with some uh, previously proposed methods of auxiliary coordinates, but as I mentioned, those were offline. So basically what we see, say for MNIST, the red line, uh, the red plot is um, our approach, the uh, alternating minimization approach. And uh, essentially SGD is blue here, Adam is black. So basically then uh, with a large number of epochs, we see that we perform pretty much as well as uh, SGD and um, Adam, and definitely much better than those kind of offline approaches uh, like Taylor's, ADMM and so on and so forth. Um, in CIFAR, kind of similar picture, uh, effectively. But what's interesting, 
if you look not at the multiple epochs of training neural net, but you just look in the first epoch and just see which algorithm kind of learns faster in the beginning, we keep noticing that this new proposed alternating minimization, the red line, is typically learning faster than both SGD and Adam, both on MNIST and CIFAR-10. Again, we don't have any like theoretical proof that it's always going to happen, and it's probably not going to always happen. But it seems to be interesting that it learns faster in the beginning and then essentially matches performance of SGD and Adam. Uh, at least on those data sets and with architectures that we tried. So it was quite encouraging because, as I mentioned, uh, these ideas about using uh, alternating minimization, target propagation, and so on uh, in different flavors, they were around for a while, but the main problem was to actually see whether they can achieve the same performance or even beat SGD and other SGD-like kind of more advanced learning methods. Also, we tried it on convolutional networks, while well, relatively simple ones, uh, and um, some recurrent neural nets as well. Again, so it's just uh, showing promising results. We didn't um, do the very extensive empirical evaluation on very large scale networks and data sets. But uh, the goal here was just to show the promise of this approach that essentially is most of the time comparable with SGD and Adam even on those different architectures, sometimes tends to learn faster in the beginning, as I mentioned, and definitely was considerably outperforming um, the previously proposed auxiliary coordinate methods that didn't have this uh, ability to learn online. So essentially, uh, that's uh, the conclusion here would be that uh, with the best of our knowledge, it was uh, kind of the first algorithm that did not use backpropagation, did not use chain of gradients, and yet was able to be kind of quite competitive with standard approaches, at least on the data sets and the architectures that we tried so far. And also, as I mentioned, <clears throat> with, um, say, binary nets or non-differentiable non-linearities, um, the usual standard backpropagation, of course, cannot be applied directly, so people use some simplifications like straight through estimate or essentially you just ignore <clears throat> uh, nonlinearities there. And uh, also the difference target propagation method from Joshua Benjo's group uh, from 2015 uh, was kind of compared at some point with these approaches. But what we can see here that um, when dealing with binary networks, uh, we definitely seem to converge much faster to the lower error um, than um, their approach. So essentially, yeah, we reached the same error in less like than 20 epochs. And uh, it required them I think, much more, uh, about 200 epochs. So essentially order of magnitude, magnitude uh, reduction in the number of epochs to reach the same error. So basically uh, to conclude, um, what we propose here is a um, novel online algorithm in the family of so-called auxiliary variable approaches, which has this property, the main property of not needing the chain of gradients, of breaking it. And essentially it works better than this type of approaches uh, proposed before that only can work with offline uh, data set, uh, which is obviously not scalable. And um, we also had several flavors of our approach, depending on some optimization details uh, for the sub problems. And we were showing that one of them outperforms the other as well. It's good to know. Um, we also uh, have at least some theoretical um, kind of guarantees about the convergence and its speed for this algorithm. And our evaluations, as I said, I mean, they're promising in a sense that at least for the first time, we see this uh, performance being comparable and actually sometimes better than performance of standard SGD and ADAM approaches. So basically, the message here is while we're not claiming that <laughs> we are putting backpropagation out of business, well, by no means, it's just an interesting alternative that might be good to explore because it has 
complementary set of properties to what backpropagation has. Um, it, by definition, will not have vanishing or exploding gradients because there is no chain of gradients. And also by definition, by the way it works, it allows you to massively parallelize computation of uh, weights, uh, optimization of weights, uh, which um, is not as easy to do as standard backpropagation. So that, that's essentially the promising message of this approach. Well, thank you.